Hello everyone, this is OI Education presenting to you Nucle part 1. In this video, we will discuss about composition and size of nucleus. We divided this section into four different subsections. Okay. Then we will move to atomic mass unit and finally we will conclude with types of nucleus. So let me start with some known facts about atoms and nucleus. We all know that atoms contains electrons, protons and neutrons. Among them, electrons are revolving around the nucleus, while protons and neutrons are known as the building blocks of the nucleus. So when we want to represent any nucleus, we have to know two terms. The first one is the atomic number. You know, what is atomic number? Atomic number is the number of proton that a nucleus have. And the second term is the mass number. And mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons that a nucleus have. Okay. Let us consider we want to represent a nucleus say X. So to represent X nucleus, we have to write the atomic number in the lower subscript, while we have to write the mass number in the upper subscript. And X is the symbolic representation of the element. For example, say we want to represent helium nucleus. So first of all, we have to write the symbol for helium which is He and we all know that helium contains two protons so two and it has two neutrons okay since helium have two protons so its atomic number is two so we have to write the atomic number of helium in the lower subscript and the total number of protons and neutrons within helium is 4, 2 plus 2, okay. So its mass number is 4, so we have to write 4 in the upper subscript. So this is the symbolic representation for helium nucleus. Let us now move to constituents of nucleus. We already discussed that nucleus contains protons and neutrons. And as a whole, we know them as nucleons. Okay. Among the nucleons, proton is positively charged, while neutron is electrically neutral. So, what will be the total charge of any nucleus? Okay. Let us consider the charge of single proton is plus E. Then the total charge of the nucleus that is Q is given by plus E into the number of proton that the nucleus have which is the atomic number of the nucleus. Therefore the total charge of the nucleus is given by plus ZE where Z is the atomic number of the nucleus and E is the charge of single proton. Let us calculate the mass of the nucleus, okay. So I think you may know the mass of proton and it is given as 1.6726 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. Similarly, the mass of neutron is 1.6749 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. So the mass of proton and mass of neutron is roughly equal. So we can write the mass of proton mp, so this equal to mass of neutron mn and which, which is equal to small m we can consider this okay therefore the mass of nucleus is given by m into total number of nucleons within the nucleus which is the mass number so if we represent the mass of nucleus with the help of capital m then this is the expression for mass of nucleus okay let us work out the size of nucleus, okay. Nucleus is considered to be spherical in shape, okay. 
okay let us consider this is the nucleus and r is the radius of the nucleus okay so the radius of nucleus is given by the relation r equal to r naught a to the power 1 by 3 where r naught is a constant quantity and a is the mass number of the nucleus and the value of r naught is equal to 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter and this 10 to the power minus 15 meter is known as 1 fermi so we can write r naught equal to 1.2 fermi okay from this relation we have observed that this uh, the radius of nucleus r is directly proportional to the cube roots of its mass number okay so similarly we can work out the volume of the nucleus so volume of nucleus is given by the relation 4 by 3 pi r cube where r is the radius of the nucleus so we can replace the value of r from the above relation and from here it is observed that the volume of nucleus is directly proportional to its mass number so till now we have calculated for the radius and volume of nucleus okay now we will work out the density part as you know the density is given by mass per unit volume so we have calculated the mass of nucleus as m into a where m is the mass of proton or neutron and a is the mass number of the nucleus similarly we have calculated the volume of nucleus like this okay so after putting the values of m and r naught we can find out the density of nucleus is 2.3 into 10 to the power 17 kg per meter cube okay the most interesting fact is that the density of nucleus is independent to its mass number because previous in previous result we have observed that the radius of nucleus is directly proportional to the cube roots of its mass number while the volume is proportional to its mass number okay but here we have observed that the density of nucleus does not depend on its mass number and is a constant quantity let us discuss about atomic mass unit right so one atomic mass unit is defined as 112 mass of 6 is 12 atom okay and we know that the mass of 6 is 12 atom is equal to 1.992678 into 10 to the power minus 26 kg so after calculation we will find 1 amu is equal to 1.660565 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg okay so we can convert this mass into equivalent energy by using Einstein's famous mass energy relation so here we have applied e equal to mc square relation where c is the velocity of light in vacuum okay so after calculation we will find the equivalent energy is equal to 931 mega electron volt similarly we can calculate out the mass of electrons protons and neutrons in terms of atomic mass unit and these are the corresponding values okay so let us now move to a new topic types of nucleus okay we can classify nucleus depending upon their proton or neutron number as well as their energy states okay so uh, the first classification is isotopes and isotopes are the nuclei which have same atomic number but they have different mass number as well as the neutron number okay and since they have same atomic number they must of same element okay so let us consider the example of 3li6 and 3li7 in 3li6 the atomic number is 3 and the mass number is 6 and the neutron number is given by 6 minus 3 that is 3 but in the case of 3li7 the atomic number is 3 the mass number is 7 and the neutron number is 7 minus 3 that is 4 so in both the cases they have same atomic number but they are differing mass number and in neutron number so since they have same atomic number they must be of same element okay the second classification is isobar and isobar are the nuclei which have same mass number but they are differing neutron number as well as in atomic number okay 
For example, in one H3, the atomic number is 1 and the mass number is 3. Therefore, the neutron number is 3 minus 1, that is 2. Okay. But in the case of 2 He3, the atomic number is 2, the mass number is 3, and the neutron number is 3 minus 2, that is 1. Okay. So, they have same mass number, but they are differing atomic number as well as in neutron number. So, since they are differing atomic number, they must be of different element. Okay. Now, the third classification is isotons. Isotons have the same neutron number, but they are differing atomic number as well as the mass number. Okay. So, in the case of 17 Cl37, we have atomic number 17 and mass number is 37. So, neutron number is 37 minus 17, that is 20. In case of 19K39, here the atomic number is 19, the mass number is 39, therefore the neutron number is 20. So, in both the cases, the neutron number is same. So, they are known as isotons. The last classification is isomers. Isomers have same mass number, atomic number and neutron number, but they are differing energy state. This is very much important. Okay. We know that electron can exist in ground energy state as well as in excited state. Okay. Similarly, nuclei can also exist in ground energy state and also in excited state. When any nucleus can exist in two different energy levels, then they are known as isomers. For example, we can consider the case of cobalt. In both the cases, the atomic number is 27 and the mass number is 58. Okay and the neutron number is 31 okay but the cobalt nucleus can exist in two different energy levels okay so therefore the cobalt nuclei together known as isomers thank you for watching please subscribe our channel oi education